The truth behind Web 3.0, Hype versus Reality. What is Web 3.0? Well, Web 3 or Web 3.0 has created such an intense buzz, in the tech world, that has made several people, take a serious look at it. I can tell you Web 3.0 is still a lot of undefined set of elements, which lacks clarity, raises excitement, optimism, as well as skepticism. Some are willing to quit their high-paying jobs, in large corporations, sell their homes, and take a plunge, deep into the murky waters of Web3, and others are willing to call out the hypocrisy of the investors, whom they believe, are out to create a buzz and hype, about this technology, in order to make a quick buck, at the expense of the unsuspecting investors. If you have no clue about Web 3.0, or if you are confused about the competing descriptions about it, and want a simple, lucid explanation of what Web 3.0 truly is, you are in the right place. If you have guessed, that Web 3 is version 3, or the third generation of web technology, I'd say, you are definitely on the right track. That begs a simple question. What are the previous versions of web technology? Well, the first version of web technology is Web 1.0, and this was introduced to the world, in the early part of 1990s. In 1991, the World Wide Web was a brand new concept, and simple static pages, started coming up slowly. Browsers were created subsequently, which parsed and displayed a markup language, HTML. Later, JavaScript, and Flash, provided some interactivity. The user content usually was processed, and a response static file was returned by the server, either through a hyperlink, or through applications that existed on the backend, called CGI, ASP, or Java servlets. In short, the interactivity by the user was very limited, and they were just consumers. The servers didn't have a lot of information from the user, and hence, targeted advertising, was not possible. Web 2.0 is what is currently available, with its origins dating back about two decades. Web 2.0 has been a lot more interactive, which allowed users to send specific requests, and the responses were based on constant stream of information, received from the users. Blogs, Facebook, YouTube, Google searches, Twitter, Instagram, etc., are based on user information, and this data is stored, on centralized servers, residing on the company's network, like Google Network, Facebook Network, etc. The data, which can give an insight into people's preferences, or purchases, has then been used for targeted advertising, either by these platforms, or were sold to external third parties for marketing. Okay, if Web 2.0 is where we are, how does Web 3.0 differ from these? Web 3.0 promises a lot of things. Though Web 3.0 specifications are not fully defined yet, the general consensus seems to be that Web 3.0 will be based on a decentralized, distributed, peer-to-peer -peer network, called blockchain. The obvious question is, why use such a network, and what are the advantages of it? The primary goal of Web 3.0 is user-owned network. Simply put, the users will have an ownership stake, on the underlying network. This network is a peer-to-peer -peer network, and it maintains the ledger of the transactions, in all the nodes or computers, that are part of the peer-to-peer -peer network. In other words, the copies of all the transactions, are held on every single computer, on the network. Hence, it becomes a distributed ledger, on a decentralized network. The sets of transactions are put in a block, and are interlinked with each other. Hence it's known as blockchain, or blockchain network. The nodes, or the computers, connected to the blockchain network, will become owners of the network. The decision-making authority of the node, or the owner of the computer, is based on the number of tokens the node owns. The higher the number of tokens, the larger the voting authority of the user. The token is a form of digital asset. If the blockchain network powers some underlying cryptocurrency, 
then the digital assets are in the form of cryptocurrency. Usually, the miners, who validate the transactions of the blockchain network, are either given a reward, or paid some fees, in the form of cryptocurrency, in exchange for the computing power, that the miners provide to the network, as well as the time, to validate the blockchain transactions. In the peer-to-peer -peer blockchain network, the authority is not centralized to a corporation, government, or a bank, but instead, it is truly an open network with users from different locations. This is why we call as decentralized network. By definition, all peer-to-peer -peer networks are decentralized. Since Web 3.0 will be based on blockchain, having the knowledge on blockchain, is a prerequisite for Web 3. You can see more about blockchain from our video on it. Though blockchain technology found its first application by powering bitcoins, blockchain doesn't find its value only for cryptocurrencies. One of the reasons why people tend to confuse blockchain with cryptocurrencies, is because, blockchains are needed to power the cryptocurrencies. In simple language, cryptocurrencies need blockchain technology, but blockchain can exist without cryptocurrencies. If blockchains are used, for applications outside of cryptocurrencies, what could be the reasons? And how will the validators of the transactions, be paid? First, let's look at the reason, why Web 3.0 is based on blockchains. In a blockchain, there is a high reduction in the risk of data loss, as the data is found in multiple computers spread around, against a few servers of a corporation, or governmental agency. Since the data is highly encrypted, many forms of data corruption from external hackers are largely reduced. The distributed network also eliminates data fraud, almost entirely. Increased level of trust, since data is shared among all the owners of the blockchain network, as the data has been validated, and found accurate. There are many applications of blockchain, like supply chain management, which is crucial for any business that is sourcing its parts, from multiple locations, and countries. The supply materials travel may be tracked by scanning a QR code, RFID tag, barcode, etc., and transmitted to a blockchain network, for an added level of security. It's already in use by many companies including, Walmart, Starbucks, BMW, Ford, Target, FedEx, etc., where hassle-free payment to suppliers is done, and double financing by suppliers is prevented, and trusted traceability is possible, in the case of food. Blockchains has utility in maintaining land sale records. Fraudsters figure out a way, to circumvent the centralized system, usually the local government. Blockchain can prevent such fraud, and provide peace and security, for the home buyers. In the case of high-priced, fashion brands, eliminating counterfeit is a big issue, for their profits. Blockchains can ensure the customers that they are buying a genuine brand, and not the counterfeits. Web 3.0 aims to utilize these advantages of a decentralized network, like blockchain, and make the concept of centralization of data, like what is currently present with Google or Facebook, go away. In the process of maintaining a distributed ledger, decentralized network, each node in the peer-to-peer -peer network of the blockchain is treated as, not just the user or keeper of the data, but also the owner of the blockchain, like what we discussed earlier. So, the members of the blockchains or the peer-to-peer -peer network, can vote on all decisions related to the company, instead of a few board members, making the calls. Despite all this, Web 3.0 is attracting a lot of criticism, including, from some of the top tech honchos. Some of the critics claim Web 3.0 is a hoax, hype, or even fraud. They have their reasons too. So, let's take a look at some of the most important issues, that were raised by the critics. Web 3.0 involves high cost, in terms of computation, networking and implementation. The underlying technology of Web 3.0, namely blockchains, keep record of all the transactions, on all the computers, in the network. So, the block size will keep growing, 
larger and larger, as time progresses. This results in heavy computation power, as well as high networking traffic. If the entire web technology is based on blockchains, the cost will reach astronomical levels. So, Web 3.0 is absolutely not scalable at this point. Of course, Web 3 is likely to have multiple blockchains, but the interactions between these blockchains is unclear, and unless these things are spelt out properly, Web 3 is just a wild aspiration, than a reality. Also, people like Elon Musk, and Jack Dorsey, have been pretty vocal, about pointing out the fact, that despite the claims that Web 3 will be publicly owned, the facts on the ground seemed to suggest, wealthy initial investors, have already taken a huge chunk of the new blockchain network they created, before letting in the public to participate. In other words, Web3 will not be decentralized ownership, as claimed by the proponents of it, including Silicon Valley companies. In many cases, it gives an impression of a multi-level marketing idea, with venture capitalists like Mark Anderson sitting pretty, at the top of the pyramid. Jack Dorsey calls Web3 as, not owned by people, but by the venture capitalists and their partners. Of course, there is data to support this. There is enough skepticism, from many quarters, generating a belief, that the venture capitalists are hyping up the concept of Web3, for personal gains. In our assessment, there is definitely a lot of exaggeration, about what Web3 is all about, than what is currently feasible, and the implementation of it involves, overcoming a lot of challenges. On the technological front, Web3 promises to bring many changes, and can happen, possibly in a few years, after clear specifications are spelt out. On the ownership front, we don't expect Web3 doing much in terms of decentralization, or distributed ownership. It will be very interesting, to track the progress of Web 3.0 though. I'm sure it will be a bumpy ride, to say the least. Thanks for watching.